Hello everyone. Welcome to today's session. In today's session, we are going to discuss how to develop a CNN model from the scratch. Now, CNN is a type of artificial neural network. It is mainly used for um, computer vision tasks like image recognition, image classification and object detection. Now, let's see about CNN in detail. Now, CNN consists of series of layers. Okay, so like it has a series of convolution layer, max pooling layer. So you can see there are many convolution max pooling layers are placed together. Finally, you will have a flatten layer and then you will have a fully connected layer and then the uh, output layer. So this is the architecture of CNN. Now what is happens in the CNN? The input image is given to the layers. Now what happened in the convolution layer is you will have a filter. Now the filter will pass through the image. Once it, once it is passing through the image, it learns the important feature of the image. So you will have many convolution layers. Each convolution layer will have a different type of filter. The first convolution layer will learn features such as edge and simple textures. So very low level uh, features will be learned in the initial layers, initial convolution layer. And the next uh, convolution layer will have some com will learn some complex uh, features or complex uh, textures or patterns. And the last convolution layer will learn the specific objects that is available in the image. Okay, so uh, as you add more and more convolution layer, okay, uh, the layer will learn the advanced features of the image. Okay, so when your architecture has a very, when your model or architecture has a very less number of convolution layers, then maybe your model doesn't learn all the feature of an image and it will not recognize the image. So, um, uh, even uh, if you add more number of layers, sometimes a convolution layer, sometimes your model will not learn all the features. So, you have to find out what is the optimum number of layers that is required by your model to learn all the feature of your image. So, it depends upon the image data set. Okay. So, uh, as a summary, we can tell the initial layers will learn the basic feature of an image and the last layers will learn the specific feature of an image. So the number of convolution layers that is required for your data set, it depends upon the type of the data set you have and the complexity of the data set you have. Okay, so, uh, so convolution layers will learn the feature. Now, uh, how it learns a feature is, as I told you, you will have a filter. The filter will be passing through the image. Matrix multiplication will happen. So the output will be in very large size. So to reduce the size and to make your image uh, hand, uh, handled by the uh, CNN, we are reducing the feature by adding max pooling layer in between. So here you can see this is the first convolution layer. Then we add a max pooling layer, which will reduce the complexity um, uh, or the size uh, which can be handled by your CNN. Okay, and then we had again a convolution layer. Then again, we add a max pooling layer. So in your model, you will have many convolution and max pooling layers are placed together. So convolution layers are used to learn the features. Okay, so and um, uh, as it learns the features, you can see the size of your image is also getting reduced. Similarly, max pooling layer is also used, which also will reduce or which will concentrate on the most important feature, leaving all the uh, unimportant features. So that is the job of max pooling layer. So once all the features are learned, you will get a two dimensional matrix as output. Now that two dimensional matrix will be flattened by using a flattened layer. And then that is given as an input to the fully connected layer and finally you have your output layer. Now number of neurons that you will have in your output layer will depend upon how many classes are there in your uh, input image. So this is the overall uh, concept of the CNN. Now let's see in detail about each layer. Now um, first we will talk about the image, the input. So image uh, CNN requires a very large data set as input. Okay, so if you uh, give very less number of samples as input to your CNN, maybe your CNN will be um, 
will not perform well or it will be overfitting it will try to learn the or by heart the uh, uh, data set so it, you can see a very good accuracy in your training data set but when you give a testing data set you can see your accuracy drops down so if your data set is very small in size the cnn will start by hearting the data set and it will not perform well that uh, process is called as overfitting okay so overfitting means you will get an accuracy of 100 percentage okay uh, so uh, we need a very large data set for uh, to develop a good model now uh, image uh, is input uh, image is given as an input to your cnn model now image that can be uh, either it have two channels if it is a grayscale image if it is a um, uh, three channel colored image you will have three channels that is rgb okay so here you can see the first one indicates the width and this one is a height and the third uh, channel is for the color you can see red green and blue okay so image will be converted into pixels and it will be given as an input to the um, uh, convolution layer now in the convolutional layer here you can see um, a filter so here which is uh, colored in yellow so this is a filter you can see the filter has some value uh, okay so here you can see the filter has a value 101010 and 101 so this filter is actually moving across the image okay so you can see uh, it's moving uh, with one stride okay so this is stride so you can see it's jump one stride this is called a stride so it moves across the image so when it moves across the image you can see matrix multiplication is taking place so here this is your input okay so once the uh, it passed through the convolution layer you will get a convolved feature feature so which is uh, you can see uh, just the uh, 3 by 4 or uh, it's just a half of uh, your input will be your output so you can see the size is reduced uh, if you pass your input to your convolution layer so you can see the size is reduced right okay so your image nowadays you can see your image is very complex in shape it may be it is having uh, 220 uh, 2 into 222 into uh, 3 so maybe your image is very large to handle by the cnn so when you pass to the convolution layer you can see the size of your image becomes less and is easy to handle by the cnn so this is what is happening in the convolution layer now this filter is very very important because this filter only will help you to learn the features now there are different filters as i, as I told you before one filter to learn the shape one filter to learn the edge one filter to learn the texture okay so like that you have different filters okay so you will add many convolution layers with the different filters to learn the feature of the image so uh, this is your convolute feature okay uh, now as i told you there are different type of filters so you can see there are different type of filters i have given some example uh, this is the filter which learns the uh, sharpness of the image this is a filter uh, which will uh, blur your image and this is a filter which will detect the edge of an image so you will have you will add a different convolution layer with a different filter to learn the different feature of the image okay so uh, now here you can see the filter moves across the uh, image yes uh, as it moves across the image you can see the matrix multiplication will happen so uh, and then you will get your uh, convolute output so this is your output okay that you can see the size is very much uh, decreased when compared to your input volume okay now the next layer is a max pooling layer so in max pooling layer we uh, use this max pooling layer to just uh, focus on the uh, the most predominant feature okay so this is the feature that we got uh, this is the output that we got from the convolution layer so now uh, here also we assign a filter so here the size of the filter is 2 cross 2 filter in the case of convolution layer here you can see the size of the filter is 3 cross 3 filter here the size of the filter is 2 cross 2 filter so you can um, uh, repeat your model with a different uh, filter size and check what will be the accuracy of your model okay so here you can see a 2 cross 2 fil uh, filter is striding across the convolute feature okay and the, uh, uh, the sliding uh, size is 1 so you can see it is moving um, uh, side, uh, sliding size is 1 and here the sliding size is 2 uh, okay so you can see it is moving uh, two positions okay so a two cross two filter uh, is sliding across the convolute feature and when it is sliding actually what layer you are going to add is max pooling layer so it just takes the maximum uh, feature that is recorded so here you can see which is maximum eight is maximum so here six is maximum here nine is maximum here nine is maximum so just records only the maximum feature when it strides
lines across the convolute feature okay so you also have average pooling layer you have minimum pooling layer you have different pooling layers which will record the average value and the minimum value or it will record the maximum value uh, okay so this is a job of the max pooling layer so max pooling layer just concentrates on the uh, predominant uh, feature um, just by recording the maximum uh, feature okay this is your max pooling layer so uh, so the output of the max pooling layer will be a two dimensional matrix now this will be converted into a single dimensional vector or one dimensional array by including a flattening layer so when you add a flatten layer uh, your output will be uh, like this so the next layer will be a fully connected layer so here you can see uh, the two dimensional matrix was converted into one dimensional array now this is given as an input to a fully connected layer this fully connected layer resembles artificial neural network uh, so this will be uh, this will be the input okay this input will pass through many hidden layers so this is similar to the hidden layer and this is your output layer okay so uh, this architecture now it becomes very similar to the artificial neural network so now uh, here the number of hidden layers required the number of neurons required again it's like a trial and error method you have to try it for different uh, configuration to check which model is the uh, best model uh, now here if you see uh, the weights will be assigned uh, randomly okay and the input will pass through it and checks whether uh, the prediction is correct if the prediction is wrong then the the network will be back propagated and the loss function will be calculated and the weight will be adjusted accordingly so this is how the uh, network learns the uh, features of the input data set and it tries to classify the image uh, to the correct class so if the classification is wrong then the loss function will be calculated and it will be back propagated and the weights will be adjusted accordingly so this is a concept which is used in the fully connected layer now in keras if you see um, how this uh, uh, fully connected layers are done is with the help of uh, dense layer so here uh, uh, i told you we will be adding the hidden layer so this example in this example you can see there is only one hidden layer so how this hidden layer is actually added in keras is by uh, adding a dense layer so here you can see uh, there is a input layer and we are adding a dense layer dense layer is nothing but the hidden layer okay so you can add any number of dense layers so here in this example you can see there are two dense layers are added and finally you have the output layer okay so the input is nothing but the feature that we learned um, okay uh, by adding the convolution and max pooling layers right so this is your input so first we learn the features um, uh, features of the input image by adding many convolution and max pooling layers so we will get the feature in two dimensional matrix that feature is converted into one dimensional vector and that feature is your input okay that feature is your input and then we add many dense layers that are that are nothing but the hidden layers okay and then we have the output layer at the last now uh, the dense layer when you're talking about the dense layer the number of neurons i told you it is uh, like a trial and error method the number of hidden layers required the number of neurons required in the hidden layers uh, it's, it's like a trial and error method you have to try different combinations to check which uh, how when the network behaves uh, good okay and you need to give an activation function also in the uh, dense layer okay and finally this is how your cnn model will look like so here you can see uh, in this model here you can see um, the convolution layer is added here okay so this is a number of uh, uh, filter and this is the size of the filter this is the activation function okay so here you can see there are two convolution layers are added with the different filter size okay the kernel size remains the same the kernel size is nothing but the filter size okay and then you can see a max pooling layer is added and this is the size of the filter of max pooling layer uh, okay you can see many dropout layer, uh, layers are added in between so this dropout layers are actually uh, uh, helps you to prevent uh, overfitting sometimes the weight will be very high and the uh, uh, the network the model uh, will be overfitting to reduce the overfitting we will sometimes will add a dropout layer in between uh, 
so here you can see another uh, convolution layer then again a max pooling layer so you can see many convolution layers and max pooling layers are added okay the number of max pooling and the convolution layer it depends upon the complexity of the image um, okay so if you want to uh, 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 learn more features from the image then you have to add more convolution on the max pooling layer and finally you have a flatten layer here and then you have the dense layers and finally you will have the output layer okay so this is how a cnn model will uh, look like so hope you um, understood uh, how to uh, create a cnn model from the scratch so we will see um, uh, a demo for the CNN model with a, a real time data set in the uh, another session. So, if you have any comments, uh, if you have any uh, queries or questions, uh, let me know in the comments. Thank you for listening.